welcome to yet another video of course from scratch so so proud of you for showing up today i'm working extremely hard for this channel i'm going to keep putting out the content i'm going to keep explaining you in the most simple way possible until you tell me you're completely sure that you can solve the questions all i'm asking is just show up every single day with me practice with me if you're not able to do questions right now by yourself it's completely fine even in binary search in any topic if you have any problem until you're completely sure we're going to keep putting up videos but you need to practice you need to take out your laptop or your computer you need to practice the questions you need to write down the code okay so yeah we'll understand the concepts but you have to practice please do that for me let's get started so this is the question that we will be discussing today string permutations this is actually not an easy question it's a medium level question and it is an extremely important topic so you're given a string and you have to find all the permutations of the given string what are permutations permutations mean that you're arranging the elements in all the possible ways so basically the first element can be like a or it can be b or it can be c then after you fix first element the second element can also be b or c like here if it is a after that the second element can be either b or c like this so basically you have to arrange the elements in all the possible ways so how many possibilities are there it is n factorial i'm sure all of you know this from school so basically if there are n places the first place can be filled in n possible ways since the first place must have, must have taken like one element the second place can be filled by n minus one elements the next place can be filled by n minus two elements and so on so there are n factorial possibilities let's just quickly see that in the diagram also so if we have a b c then see the first place can be either taken by a or it can be taken by b or it can be taken by c now once you have fixed the first place the second two places have to be set right so how can you do that so here you have fixed a so after that there are two possibilities you either fix b or you either fix C, right? Here also there are two possibilities. You either put A or you put C. Here also there are two possibilities. Either you put A or you put B. And after you have put the elements and there is only one possibility remaining since you have put two elements already and there's only one element left, you can just fill it. So A, B, then here C is left, here A is left, here B is left, here A is left. Like this, you can just fill it. See, if you have to understand the n factorial part again, so if there are n places that have to be filled, right? n places are there like this. The first place can be filled in n ways. And then once you fix this place, it can be either A, B, C, anything. Then this place can be filled by n minus 1 uh, elements, right? So there are n minus 1 possibilities. This one can be filled by n minus 2, this one by n minus 3 and so on. In the end, there will be only one element left which has to be filled, right? So all of these are possibilities. So what are the total possibilities? So it will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and so on till into 1. So this is basically n factorial. So that is why there are n factorial possibilities. Now let's try to understand how we will write the code using recursion. See, you are given a string. Now somehow in this string itself, if we can make sure that, okay, our first element is A or B or C, how can we do that? See here, the first element was A itself. So basically we are letting the element that as it is. Then what are we doing? We are getting the second element to the first position. So how can we do that? One way is to just, you know, swap these two elements. So what will happen? So basically this ABC will become BAC. So basically what you're doing is you're making sure that, okay, the first element is B. Now, whatever the rest is there, you don't have to care. So what you are doing, you're just swapping these two elements and just getting the B over there right so right now again to repeat your focus is to get the b over here right so in order to get that one way is to just swap these two elements so you get the b over here and the, because of swapping a will come over here c will come over here your focus over here is to get this b similarly your focus over here is to get the c so what you can do you can swap these two elements so basically you got c over here you got b was over there only you are not making any change and then you get over a over here see if there was say a b c d e also what you have to do you have to fix this first place with first a then b then c then d then e right so how you can do that first you will let a b so that is like you, you will basically let A be there, like you're not going to make any change. So 
A will be there. So that is one possibility. The second possibility is to get B to the first place. So you will swap these two. So basically in that case, our tree would have looked like this. So here you are letting A be there. Then after that, you are getting this B to the first position. So what you will do, you will swap these two. So basically it will look like B, A, C, D, E. And then after that, to, in order to make sure that, okay, C is on the first place, you will swap C and A. Okay, so it will look like C, B, A, D, E, like this. So like the previous videos, here also we'll be drawing the recursive tree with only three elements. But I suggest that, you know, take a bigger uh, example like A, B, C, D, E, so that it is completely sure that, okay, this is how recursive tree is happening. Okay, draw the possibilities and you will be able to understand that, okay, how are we coming up with n factorial possibilities? Here we are taking an example with three elements, so it will be three factorial, three into two into one, so six only six possibilities right one two three four five six when you take a bigger one like this five so it will be basically five factorial so it will be five into four into three into two into one but i suggest you to draw the recursive tree and understand it okay how we are making sure that we are taking care of all the possibilities another thing that i want you to notice is that see over here when you came you had swapped b with a right so your thing became a b c your string became b a c so then from here, you again swapped B with B only and then here you swapped B with A. But see, after you would have done with this particular part, you would have gone back and then gone to this part of the tree, right? In recursive trees, whenever we drew, how did we go? We first came to this part, then this part, then we went back, we came this part, came with this part back, then came back, came over here, right? Like this only we were going. Now what I'm saying is, that when you go back from here and when you go over here, see, when you go back from here, your string would have become B, A, C. But what you have to do is you have to swap A and C over here. So in order to have that, your string should be in the original state and not in B, A, C. So when we go back, we have to make sure, I mean, basically when we backtrack, we have to make sure that our string goes back to the original state. And that is the trick of most of the recursion questions. And this is what we did in one of the questions also when we were trying to uh, deal with numbers. Okay. And see, if this part is not clear to you, do one thing, just, you know, uh, try to dry run without doing this backtracking and you will understand it. Okay. Where you are going wrong. So what will happen is here you had ABC, here you will have BAC. Now when you go back and suppose you did not backtrack to this. So what will happen is that instead of having ABC, your string is now BAC. And now you will try to uh, swap these two elements. You will end up swapping these two. And instead of CBA, you will end up having uh, CAB. So the entire thing will go wrong. So here you have to make sure that, okay, when you're swapping with first element, second element, third element, you go back to the state and then you move ahead with the tree. That is the main catch. Let's try writing the code. It will be clear. Don't worry at all. It will be clear. Let's try writing the code now. We have to return vector of string. So let's first initialize that. And suppose let's call it our res. And this is what we'll be returning also. Okay. Now let's write a recursive function. So let's uh, return void. We are just calling the function as helper function itself. So we will have to pass this string that we are dealing with. Right. And we will be moving throughout the strings by element, right? You will be moving element by element. So what you will do, you will pass the index at which you are. Suppose we have already set up first index. So that part is already set, right? So you'll be dealing with the rest of the elements. So what you will do, you will pass an index. So that is why I'm passing an index. I'm also passing the size of the string so that, okay, we know we have reached the end. Otherwise, you can just calculate it also within the function but I am passing it over here. What else do I need to pass? I need to make changes to the RA. So I am just adding, I am just passing this also so that I can add to it. I am passing by reference so because I'll be making changes to the vector. Instead of passing by reference, we could have made the vector of string as global also. So we instead of defining it over here, we could have defined it outside. So we wouldn't have to pass it in the recursive function again and again. That is one way of writing the code. Let's write the code. So basically we have the index with which we are dealing, right? So what are we going to do? We are going to swap the elements at that point. So basically at the index and with what will we uh, swap? So we have to swap with all the other possibilities, right? So if we are at an index, suppose we are at 
B over here. We have to swap and we have fixed A suppose. Okay. And we have to put all the possibilities. We have to swap it with S. We have to swap it with G like that. Right. So we have to swap with all the possibilities. That is why what we are going to do for an index also we will have to end up writing a for loop. So I am writing for int i equal to index i is less than basically that is why i was passing n and i plus plus don't worry if it's not clear it will be completely clear i promise we will try run also so basically i'm swapping with s of index and what am i going to put i'm going to put the other element and once i have set up this index value now i will call the rest of the recursive tree how will i do that so i'll call the function again right for what will i call i will call for the next index so index plus one i'm passing the size and i am passing arrays right by calling this helper function what we have done we have gone down the recursive tree once we are done setting up all the elements at all the indices what are we going to do we are going to move back now while moving back basically by backtracking we have to go back to the previous string we have to go back to the previous state so here we had swapped but now when we swap for the next i value, what we want to do, we want to swap it back. We will try run it, don't worry at all. So here I am swapping it back with s of index and s of i. So here I am making sure that, okay, for the next i, I have swapped it back. I have moved back to my original state. We have written the recursive code. Now we have to make sure that we add a base condition so that we make sure that we do not have stack overflow and we stop our recursive function, right? Otherwise we will keep calling the function infinite times. So what do we have to do? For that we have to put the base condition. What will be our base condition? Basically whenever index reaches n minus one, right? Basically there are no more elements. We have reached the last element. So there is no point of swapping. There is no for loop, right? So in that case, what, what should be our base condition? So basically, if index becomes equal to n minus 1, we have reached the end. So in that, whatever string we have, we have to make sure we add it to our answer also, right? So we are adding it to our answer over here. And what are we going to do? We are going to return from here. So we are going to make sure we don't get into the for loop. Let's try calling the recursive function now. So what will be the initial value? So we are passing the string as it is. We will be starting from the 0th index. We have to pass the size. So I'm calculating it like this and we have to pass the RS value. Let's compile and see. Okay, here we have to return in lexicographically increasing order. So what do we do when we have to return in that? We have to basically sort it. What does lexicographically increasing order mean? We did it in previous videos also. Basically, we have to return how it would like the answer would come in additionally. So if for that, we just have to sort our answer. So I'm going to do res.begin and res.end. Now let's see. See, it's correct. So previously, if you had noticed, the only difference was that, okay, uh, the order was not correct. Rest of the permutations were correct all cases passed let's quickly dry run also so the initial index value that we have passed is zero right so our for loop will i value will go from zero to basically uh, two here we are going to pass abc okay so for first what do we do we swap s of index with s of i since both index and i value are zero zero only so our basically abc will remain as it is then from there we call for helper and we call for index one okay so it becomes zero plus one basically one then from here what will we do again we are in this so in this case our i will basically start from one and it will go to two right here again index and i value are same so when we swap we are again with abc only yes initially we are swapping the elements with itself to make sure that okay we have the string as it is also okay then from here inside this helper what are we doing we are calling for index i plus one so basically one plus one two so in this case we have reached the end because i is equal to n minus one right so we will push this into our res so how does our res look like it has a b c now okay so now what will we do we go back from here when we go back our i value was initially one right now our i value will become two when i value becomes two what happens so basically index value is one i value is two and we swap s of index with s of i so when we swap s of index with s of i basically we are swapping s of one with s of two so here we are swapping b and c so it becomes cb right 
once we do the swapping we again get into the helper function for index equal to 2 now over here when we put when we go for index equal to 2 what happens again we see that okay we have reached n minus 1 and again we end up pushing this to our res so this has also gone in our res now what will we do we come back and we check that okay i values have finished so now helper function has finished and we go into this swap and then what happens our acb was there we swap this back and we go back and this becomes abc again see here the string had become acb we are making the changes to the same string and that is why when we go back we have to uh, go back again right because we are in the same for loop if we don't do this swapping we will be dealing with acb instead of abc so we have done that so now what will happen we will go back here we will have index equal to 1 and here we will end up swapping a and b so basically it will look like b a c so it will basically look like the recursive tree that we had drawn i think from here you should be able to dry run yourself if you have any doubt at all let me know we will dry run the entire thing next time but i think this is fairly simple you should be able to do it if not the best way to go about it is to try writing the code and try debugging the code so you'll be able to see the values that okay what is the value of index what is the value of i try debugging it you will be able to draw the recursive tree the recursive stack yourself what will be the time complexity see there are n factorial possibilities and for every possibility you will either be like outputting the string or you will be copying it to some other string so for that you will require an extra space because each string is of length n so the time complexity becomes n into n factorial what will be the auxiliary space see at a particular time how big your recursive stack can be see at a time you are dealing with like n elements right so you will be going by one by one so that is why your auxiliary space complexity becomes order of n uh, space complexity remains same as time complexity because that is again the space that you require to store all the possibilities but auxiliary space is that is the extra space required uh, to store the recursive stack will be order of n i hope everything is clear if not let me know i am here to help you out uh, tomorrow we will be doing a similar but a harder question so I need you to show up and I need you to ask me all the doubts in the comments okay see you tomorrow